guys, it's Daisy Bateman here with a new podcast series, Happy Days. Each week, I will be talking to some of your favourite players and diving into their lives outside of football. To keep up to date with the podcast, check out all of North's socials and visit nmfc.com.au for more content. Hello and welcome to Happy Days. I am joined by the one and only Caitlin Ashmore. So thanks for being here, Caitlin. Yeah, thank you for having me. So what's been going on in your life at the moment? Tell me about what's what's happening. Um, obviously, I had school holidays, a well-earned break. <laughs> uh, back at school now and, um, you know, just trying to get back into things. Uh, I had an injury coming off last season, so just getting that right. And I bought a house. So I'm, yeah, pretty good. Okay, so there's a lot going on. Let's start with school. So what year at school do you teach? I teach prep. Okay, and how do you go with that? It's good. I actually love it. Um, they're such a fun age group. Yep. Um, my school's great as well. And yeah, like I said, the kids are just great um, all across the school as well. And I think I've converted a lot of kids to the Kangas. So I'm pretty happy about that. Okay. And um, I mean, I know you myself, but I'm sure teaching prep makes you a little bit clucky. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could just be walking around the schoolyard and someone will just grab your hand. And it's, you just can't. Like, they're yep. just so cute. It's probably um, my worst nightmare, but yep. Definitely clucky, but I've been clucky ever since my first nephew was born. So, okay. he just turned 11. So, <laughs> right. it's been a, a long time. Yep. Um, and on to the injury, just for the fans, because you can't just leave it an injury. Um, <laughs> so, tell us about your injury finishing off the season. Uh, yeah, so I had a bit of an, a niggly Achilles at the start of pre-season last year, got over that, and then it came back kind of halfway through the year. Okay. So, yeah, I just pushed out the last few games. Um, and then, yeah, once I finished, I had a bit of time. Obviously, they brought the season forward, which <laughs> stressed me out a little bit. But, yep. no, I'm ramping it up at the moment, so I think I'll be right by, you know, day one of pre-season. So, how do you manage an Achilles injury? Obviously, you had it during the season, so... Um, it's just load. So, obviously, playing on the wing didn't help me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just kept the load... Um, really good throughout the week and then I played my role on the weekend so yeah it was a lot of management going on and then obviously when I finished I had to um, pull it back a little bit yeah now I'm ramping it up so I'm ready to go so for the fans at home um, I've diagnosed Caitlin with an addiction to exercise (laughs) so um, you know what you see is what you get with Caitlin Um, you see her running up and down the wing but she does that in every every day of her life so um, I mean talk about that a little bit more Caitlin is your addiction to exercise I wouldn't say it's an addiction I just love doing things so I can't just sit around I can't do um, nothing for a couple of days so I had to stay off my Achilles for two weeks and that was honestly the hardest (laughs) thing I've probably done yeah I got my 10,000 steps up every day though (laughs) I know that sounds like I am addicted. <laughs> you are addicted, though. That's that's just the case. And and um, you know, on an Apple Watch, um, <laughs> I'm going to out you here. But <laughs> on an Apple Watch, it basically t- tells you like the days you've exercised consecutively. I don't know what you'd be at now. I wouldn't want to know. But I don't want to talk about that because I'm actually shattered. But the last time I checked, it was 68 days. Um, it was 86. Very okay. close. Okay, so um, it was 86 days. So for the fans at home, if you ever want to be like Caitlin Ashmore. Exercise 86 days in a row, probably, and counting now. No, it would have been more, but I had to take my Apple Watch in, so I didn't have it for five days, so my streak's gone. So basically, she'd be over 100 now. So for anyone that wants to be like her, exercise every single day. Um, but I guess we'll talk a bit about your family. So um, where did you grow up? Ballarat. Yep. So what part of Ballarat? <laughs> well, <laughs> Ballarat's Ballarat, I guess. Ballarat's just one place. Okay, yep. And um, obviously, talk about like who's in your family. Yep, so obviously got mum and dad and my brother. Yep. Um, and my brother's obviously married and he's got three kids, so two boys and a girl. Yep, and talk about your nephews and niece. So obviously Ollie, Xavier, Annabelle. Yes. So um, are they North fans? I don't know, yes. tell me. so Oliver being 11, Yep. he was born into it. My brother's mad, North Melbourne, okay. like mad. Yep. Um, and then Xavier... He was trying to go where Emma kind of barracked for Hawks. Which is his mum, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's mum. Yeah. Um, tried to drag him into the Hawks side. And then I think ever since I came across to North, I think he's kind of slowly getting into it. He, he kind of wasn't a footy boy growing up. Yeah. He was kind of more of like a Cars. Yeah. Just that, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, he's obsessed at the moment. Loves okay. the boys. Loves yeah. um, Robbie Tarrant. Yeah. Um, Steve-O, as he likes to call him. <laughs> um, yep. But no, nah, he's just obsessed. He'll 
he'll watch every game. Um, yeah. And he just loves to chat about footy, which I love that too. Yes. Um, and then Annabelle, you know, she's three, so... Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I'd say she's a North fan. She loves wearing her, um, her little jumper I got her. <laughs> but she also loves wearing pink, so it's hard to get her into a blue yes. outfit. But okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting her on the side. Yeah, and in your transition to North... I guess Lee, your brother, is a big North fan. So did that influence your decision at all? Um, yes, it did. That was honestly the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Yep. Um, like I still get really emotional about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I did love my time. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, family reasons. And I chose North because, one, my brother absolutely loves the club. Yep. And then I also played for Melbourne Uni. So that was the affiliate. And yep. we trained out on Arden Street as well. So you already know a few girls in the team, obviously, and even like Kano, who's like head of operations here, you obviously knew a lot of people that came to Melbourne Uni or have come to North. Did that help as well? Yeah, it was nice because I'm, I'm, I probably don't seem it, but I'm very shy. Yes. And it's hard for me to go to a new environment. Yep. Um, but yeah, like you said, I knew a few people, a new fi- a couple of faces as well. So yep. it was... An easier transition. Okay. And um, obviously Brisbane was really important to you. How much do you like seeing them win the grand final? Oh, my God. I cried. (laughs) (laughs) Obviously, I did the sprint um, on the day. So you were there. And I just had a feeling that they make it. So, of course, I'm going to make – I'm going to, you know, do the sprint. And honestly, it was the best ever. I I was sitting around um, Crow supporters. Yeah. (laughs) And – no, it was just – it was honestly the best. Like, they've gone through two losses in grand finals. They've gone through a rebuild. Um, yep. And I think it's just amazing to see Craig um, finally ho- hold up the cup. Yep. Um, yeah, they're just it's such a ba- great bunch and, um, yeah, really happy for them. Yeah. And um, so speak about your time at North so far. So obviously you've been at North for three years, coming on four now. God, I don't even know anymore. Well, we you're the same one. as me, right? Yeah. Um, so – how much have you enjoyed your time at North? It's been really nice um, to be back home with family. Yep. Um, obviously, when Annabelle was born, that's when I was in Brisbane and she had complications. So I just felt, yep. um, I just wanted to be closer to family. And I think, I don't know, I think I've grown as a person being back here. And obviously, I've saved enough. I've bought a house. That's, yeah. that's probably my big goal, yep. moving back here. Yep. Um, along family, alongside family. And yeah, I think, yeah, it's been good. It's yeah. been nice to – and I've got a job, Yep. Um, a teaching job, and, yeah, it seems to be going all right so far. Yeah, and in specifically North, what makes North special? I just love – it's a family club. Yep. Um, it's not a massive club like others, like yep. um, membership-wise, but our members are just amazing. And, you know, it's not about quantity, yeah. it's about quality, and I think that, that goes to show just how great of a club yep. North is. Yeah, and I mean, in our transition with coaches, um, from obviously Scotty to Croc now, I mean, Croc's been here forever. Like, everyone knows who Croc is around here. How big of an influence has he had on the group, but also you individually? Yeah, I think, you know, Scott was great. Yeah. Loved having Scott. Um, he really brought the, the, the side together. But I think something that Croc brings is, you know, he's been in the club and yeah. around the club for so many years, he's gone through everything. He's yep. been a player. Yep. He's a true shimboner. And I think, you know, this year on the wing, he's really, like, I didn't think I could, but he's put me up another level. Mm-hmm. And it's just really exciting because I know I've got more to give. Yeah. And, yeah, he's been really good for my personal growth. Yep. Um, and he's just a great guy, a great guy to talk to, like, um, at functions. You know, he gets around everyone's family. Yeah. So, like, oh, driving home to Ballarat after one of our functions... Mum and Dad just could not stop raving about him. Dad <laughs> loves him and Dad's a Saints fan, so that's a big thing yep. um, coming from him. But, yeah, he just – like, it's not just about us. Mm-hmm. We'll get to know our families as well yep. and what's important to us. Yeah, of course. Shifting over to mental health, which I obviously think that's super important myself, how would you describe your mental health? Um, it's better now. Yep. Sound uh, like Gibbo. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're pretty much the same person. <laughs> um couple of years ago obviously I was in a really down patch yep (laughs) yeah um and I didn't think I'd get out of it but here I am yeah bought a house (laughs) (laughs) for the Um, sixth time yeah no I was actually in a really bad place so I think 
I've worked really hard and finally can see the light. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So what kind of strategies did you put in place? Um, well, this uh, I kind of dragged on for a while, and then through the lockdown last year, the really long lockdown. Yeah. Um, I tried to find ways to, I don't know, take my mind off some things. So that's when I started doing trick shots. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I kind of did a few of those. I did, I did one and it took my mind off it and I was like, mm. I love it. Yeah. So I kept doing it yep. and that, that helped me and obviously um, I used the resources by the club. Yep, yeah, um, which we're super lucky to have. Yes, very lucky. And the AFL players too, they're the association, they're fantastic as well. And, um, yeah, I had a lot of support. Yep. Um, yeah. I think, um, like, I mean, from my perspective and probably everyone in our team, the one thing about mental health is you never really know if someone's struggling, right? So, you know, when you meet Caitlin, and I'm sure a lot of the fans at home have met you for the past five years and loved you six years, but, um, I mean, you appear really happy. Right, like you're one of the happiest people out there, so extroverted, but you're also really shy, which is crazy. But I think like you um, taught a lot of girls in our team a massive lesson that um, even if you are really quiet you're st- or really loud, sorry, I should say, like it doesn't mean you're okay, if that makes sense. And I think, um, yeah, like I've, I'm obviously really close with you and – like, I knew you were struggling for a bit and stuff, but um, if you hadn't have said anything, I don't think anyone would have known, which I think is um, a crazy lesson that even I've learned personally, just simply from you and other girls in our team that have been brave enough to speak up about that, which is, like, all, you know, like, why I'm doing the podcast and stuff, because I think that the balance outside of football is super important and it does take a massive toll on everyone. Mm. So I think it's pretty amazing that you've been brave enough. Like, um, we do this thing called story time, which oh, yeah. is... um. It's um, a really, really great um, thing for us to do. We all basically um, get together and we each person tells their story about, you know, where they came from, what they struggle with. And I did, I'm pretty sure I was one of the first people to tell my story. You were the first. And then you told yours maybe a couple of weeks after. And um, so many things, like, were learnt. And even from my story, I know so many things, like, were learnt about me. But... Um, there were so many girls brave enough to open up about mental health and you were one of them. And I think, like, yeah, it's pretty incredible that um, now you can see the light. But I know – I remember the days when you couldn't and mm. I think a lot of people would, so I think it's incredible that you've come this far and you're brave enough to speak about it firstly. So, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of – even fans that are listening to the podcast right now, like, they would be going through um, really tough things as well. So I guess what would your advice be to them? Oh, I think it would be just to open up because I – kept it in mm. for such a long time yeah <laughs> sorry no it's incredible yeah um and yeah just letting it out I think was the best thing for me yeah yep and we have such a good group of girls like they all got around me and you feel like you don't have anyone but you do yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> no it's brilliant. um yeah so I just say just um talk to someone whether it's family friends um contacts yep um you think you're alone, but you're not. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's great. That's amazing. Okay. So, moving on to a lighter topic. How great are your nieces, your niece and nephews? <laughs> oh, my God. Because so I know you could talk about them for a long time. <laughs> I could literally talk underwater about them. You literally bring them up into every conversation you possibly can. Ollie, Xavier and Annabelle. I reckon everyone knows their names in our team now because you bring them up into every conversation. 100%. And I reckon... The boys would know who they were too because <laughs> they just love getting around them. Yep. All Ollie wants to do is go into the change rooms and now with COVID, it's yeah. been pushed back a little bit. So hopefully one day he gets to because he's I know he's a big North fan. He is and, you know, he loves Benny as well. So yeah. I'd love to get him in. He used to love Jack Siebel but then I don't know why but Ben Cunnington and he just overtook. a couple of other just have overtaken. Yeah. I mean, that's the good thing, the talent's rising and stuff. But mm. – um. And I know you're quite close with your mum. Mm-hmm. So um, what kind of relationship do you have with your mum? Just, it's great. Um, we were going to go to Queensland in the holidays. Yep. Just gone, just a mother-daughter um, week away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then with the COVID, we yep. had to find something else to do. And we went to Warrnambool every year since I was born, pretty much. Yep. Um, so we went back there for four, four days. Yep. And it was just really nice to get away, get outside of Melbourne. 
Yes. Um, and yeah, it was just really nice to have some alone time, girls time. Mm. Um, just did some fun stuff. Yeah. That we don't usually get to do. Yeah, and um, look, this is a bit of a shift of topic, but it's um, I'm you and me are our two um, indigenous girls in the team. Obviously, I like we all know you've explained your um, heritage to us. It's still kind of a bit of a search, which I know there are a lot of people going through really, really similar things. Like, how important do you think it is? Like things like Indigenous rounds, things like Night Oak Week. Like, how important do you think they are? Yeah, I think it's really special. You know, we get to watch the boys go through that, celebrate their cultures, and everyone gets to see firsthand how special it is. Mm. And then to have us go through the same thing was really important this year. Yep. Um, and just everyone knows that how special that culture is. Yep. Um, and yeah, like it's just going to be a continuous thing now. Yep. With it's, us, yeah, it's and building. To, you know, just to have that round is so important. Mm. I'd love for it to be longer. Yeah. And NADOC week as well. Yes. Um, but we'll get there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, it's really special. And obviously to do that with Mia, who's also yeah. finding her way. Yep. Um, you know, we're, we're doing it together and I think it's really special and the club has just been fantastic about it. Yep. Um, really supportive um, and the boys have been supportive as well. Yep. So I think, I think that's something special about the Indigenous players. They all just get around each other. Yeah. Um, even from other clubs, they've been wonderful and – Yep. Yeah, it's just really important to have that those rounds just, yeah. to, just to speak up. And even, um, you know, our Indigenous round was round five this year and we versed Carlton. Um, I know you exchanged gifts with um, Natalie Plain from Carlton and how special did that feel? Like that's, a, a, that's honestly such an amazing experience. Yeah, I, <laughs> oh, I was just overwhelmed. Yeah. Honestly, it was amazing. And, yeah, to speak to Natalie and exchange those gifts, it was just surreal. Yeah, that we finally have that round for, you know, ourselves. Yeah, and then watching that over the uh, the rest of the weekend with other clubs, it's just special. Yeah, um, and yeah, it, w- it was in Tassie, so obviously it's really special for Mia because that's where her family are, yeah family are. So very true. Yeah, it was re- it was really good, and I even think um, having like obviously there's clubs that um, are without like indigenous players within like AFLW. I think it's so amazing for us to have you and Mia to just tell your stories and also um, like you guys put your hand in designing like um, a jumper with Emma McNeil. Yes. Um, So I think it's like even having you guys to be able to learn things off and some of the boys as well that put their hand in helping with our um, jumper designs. It's pretty amazing to learn about like as, um, you know, people here, like we all want to know more people, more things about the people that found the land. Like I think at the end of the day, that's the most important thing out of all of it and education to stem away from football. Um, Obviously you're a teacher by trade and I know at the moment you're travelling to to and from teaching. So you work in what Avondale Heights and you live in Ballarat at the moment. So you went back home. Um, for the off season, which I know you do quite often. So for context, I know um, – so Caitlin, every six months, moves back to Ballarat, which is ma- a massive commitment. Like we've got other girls on the team, Grace Campbell, Bendigo, um, Jamin and Jenna live in uh, Trentham, which is kind of near Ballarat, right? Like 30 minutes Yeah, out. a little bit that. Yeah. Yeah, so Country. how do you find travelling so much? Like I drive 30 minutes and I'm pretty much dead. So how do you find it? Uh, travelling's pretty hard. Uh, at the start – I hated it. Yeah. Complained all the time. But then you get used to it. So yep. the, th- the thing I hate though is now that footy's ramping up, I'm not getting home till yeah. 10, 10.30. Yep. Which I leave when it's dark and I get home when it's dark. Yep. And yeah, I just, I don't like that. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I've saved enough now. I've got my own house. Yes. And I'm, you know, just waiting for that settlement period to move yep. in. And then once that, it's going to be great, you know. Yep. I'll have my dog with me yes. finally. Yeah. <laughs> um and yeah we'll love it but yeah it's it's all right it's yeah. good I get to see my family a lot now yeah. so I'll just make the most of that yeah and obviously I think now for everyone listening that you've probably he- heard that uh Caitlin's bought a house about three times so it's clearly <laughs> something she's no one knows I've bought a house <laughs> so clearly she's quite excited about it so tell us about the journey to buying a house oh well I kind of come back from Brisbane with no savings yep um so I've started <laughs> literally from the bottom okay now we're here Yes. Um, but, yeah, no, I've yeah saved every penny that I've got, um, worked really hard and, yeah, it's, I'm obviously happy because it's been 
something in the works for so long. I didn't think it was going to happen. Yes. And how um, how many houses do you reckon you looked at before you bought this one? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Too many? There's, there's not a number. Yeah, okay. I've been through so many different houses. Yep. Uh, but it's hard because you want something that's going to suit you and yeah. then... Um, Billy, my dog, is quite precious, so yes. I want something that's going to be good for her as well. Yep. Um, and this one was just perfect. So yeah. Yeah, really happy. Yeah, you got to love that. I mean, it's taken you a while, but it's all worth it at the end of the day, right? All the travelling, everything, and you won't have to move back home anymore, right? No. Yeah. I'll just visit. Yeah, exactly. That's so yeah. good. I love that. <laughs> um, and I guess growing up, how did you get into football? I know you're an athletics champion, per se, Caitlin broke men- uh, multiple records, I've heard. Rumour has uh, it. <laughs> I didn't start footy until high school. Yep. So I did athletics since I was nine. Yep. Um, I did karate. Um, I was, it was a what belt were you? Oh, very funny. Um, I got my black belt. Oh. I started when I was nine yep. because I was getting bullied by a, a boy at primary school. And back then I was very, very shy. Yeah. So I just, you know. Yep. Um. Just kind of took took that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, mum enrolled me into karate and then my best friend was doing athletics. So we kind of just brought each other to our sports. Yep. And then I did both of those for a while and then I got to a point where I couldn't do both because I wanted to pr- pursue athletics. So I had to give up karate. And, yeah, then I found football yep. um, in high school. And honestly, I thought it was a – like, because girls didn't play football back then. Yeah. I think there was – it was one girl, Nicole Hudebrand – who I played with at Melbourne Uni for a while and Brisbane. Um, she played with the boys and I was like, oh, I don't think I could ever do that. That's weird. Mm. But looking back now, it's like it's not weird at all. No. Um, but, yeah, I just started in high school, loved it, loved tackling. Yeah. Obviously, I run a lot, so it was, it was good for me, like, yep. um, to get the frustrations out and then <laughs> found a team when I was 18. Okay. So, 18, what team was that? North Ballarat Eagles. Okay. Are they still a team now? Okay, so they folded. They folded. Yeah. Um, but now there's so many in yep. um, Ballarat. It's really good. Oh, that's great. And, like, looking at the development of football now, like, do you look back and just go, what what has happened? Yes. It's just crazy. Like, even at school, you've got preps um, that do Auskick, yeah. like the girls. Yeah. And you just see the growth. And, like, even when I was in Brisbane, I think after the first AFL women's season, there was, like, 130 new teams the next year. Yeah. Um, Jeez, just with crazy. girls like and it's like how does that happen yeah um but i just think it's amazing like yeah. they look at us and think they could actually do something now yeah where before they were just playing for fun yep i think that's pretty cool yeah and you were a priority pick <laughs> at brisbane right yes yeah cool so um the last podcast i had brit gibson on your teammate forever yeah. um and <laughs> and she had spoken about how amazing, like, the f- like how far the league had come in how many years? Six years now since its inception. Like, I guess from your perspective, how do you see that? It's, like, it's crazy. When we first started, obviously I moved um, to Brisbane. But, like, the just the resources, like, you don't think... Like, back then I thought we had amazing yeah. facilities and resources. And now they're just even, like... Even better. Yeah. Like at North, we've got our own change room. Yeah. It's like, when yeah. would that have ever, ever happened? And yep. we've got our own physios. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just... It's come a long way. It's come a long way. Yeah. Like even when we're, when we're injured, yeah. they book us in somewhere. Yes, and then we go yeah. get checked out. It's like... I know, we're well looked after, aren't we? Yeah, we're getting looked after and you think, wow, that's... It's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, the downside that comes with that is that we are part-time. So we, you know, share the load of working outside of football and your priorities almost work, right? So your priority would be teaching because football kind of has to come second. How do you find the balance? Like how do you – how do you find it? Um, Well, coming off my Achilles, I had to try and find an appointment that suited me that was around my work and it was so hard. Um, But like that sort of stuff is like, yeah, frustrating. Mm. Um, Just finding time for both of them. Yep. Um, and then obviously teaching, it's like, it's not just a, you get to school and that's it. Like you take it home. You've got planners to do. You've got all this other stuff to do. Yeah. You need to be in the right mind frame to do training and, and train at the best you can. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a juggle. Yeah. Um, 
and then throughout the seasons, obviously hard as well. Yeah, because you've got travel, and it's so True. stressful throughout the season. Because like, if you're winning, if you're losing. Yep. Um, but yeah, you you kind of get in a groove though. Yep. And how is your is your workplace flexible? Like, do they help you out a lot? Yeah, they've been pretty good. Um, I think I've I've been really lucky to fall into those hands. Yeah. Um, I swear, all you all your colleagues are at every single one of your games as well. <laughs> oh, most of the home games. Yeah. Um, I think at our last Arden Street game, I think it was against St Kilda, I probably got the most there at that one. Yeah. It was like, mm-hmm. I don't know, 15 or so people. Yeah, which That's amazing. Yeah, it's good, um, especially because a lot of them aren't North fans. So Yeah. And I think like where you work or like also, like you're, they all support you because it's what we do is quite amazing. Like if you think about it, like we're paving the way for the next generation, right? Young girls and you teach a lot of young women that, um, may want to go into that one day and you're inspiring them every day because you're part-time like you go to footy overnight and after training and I'm sure they all watch your games on the weekend like it's pretty crazy to think about like how you're literally inspiring the young generation on and off the field right because you're a teacher yeah. and like you look at someone like Emma Carney as well who's obviously previously been a teacher but she works in the huddle foundation here she goes out to clinics nearly every day you know talking to young kids and stuff like People like you guys don't realise, like, on and off the field, you actually have such a massive impact. Like, it's crazy. All I do is sit in an office and edit videos. So... It is, yeah, it is crazy. You don't think about what you're, like, how or how you're impacting someone else. Mm. Like, I just go to work and I think, oh, yeah, I've yeah. got footy later. Yep. Whereas I go to school on, a, like, a weekend, like, after the weekend, and one of the kids would be like, why did you hit the post, <laughs> Miss Ashmore? And, like, it's like... I didn't realise people actually watch. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, Like, especially the young kids. Like, um, I've got two little cousins of my own, Cash and Aiden. Great name, Cash. (laughs) They are crazy North Melbourne, like, AFLW fans. They support Geelong. Like, they are avid Geelong fans in the men's. And then as soon as the women's come on, like, I remember I went went to one of their cricket games and every young kid came up to me like, oh, do you play AFLW? That's amazing. And I just feel like even, like, your yeah. nephews and niece, like, they're going to grow up in a world where, like, AFLW is a thing. It's, like, normal. Yeah. And it's, like, even crazy, like, young kids, like, look up to you and people in our team as, like, heroes. Like, which is just I so – it's, it's so weird it's to crazy, actually fathom and think about. Like, it's just such a massive impact on the next generation, which is pretty incredible. But I guess on that, like, um, what inspired you to be a teacher? Um, well, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So yeah. when I finished school – uh, my nephew was born yep. when I turned 18. Oh, crazy. And, like, that first two years I was kind of like, oh, it's actually really fun teaching him things. Yep. Um, and then I was like, you know what, I actually really want to be a teacher. So I went to school. Yep. Um, or uni. And, yeah, I got my teaching degree. <laughs> it was j- easy as that. Yeah. But before that I had no idea. And you did, did you teach in Brisbane? No. Okay. Because it's hard. I had to, to change. Tra- yeah, transfer and stuff, don't you? Yeah, to Queensland. I knew I was only there for six months. So. Yep. Um, I had a few jobs working at a cafe. Yeah, cool. And stuff like that. So and then you come, okay, you came home now, and you're a teacher. Here I am, and you teach preps. I know it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, like that's crazy. I mean, yeah, it's such a work life balance sometimes, and everyone in our team does it. Yeah, yeah, it's normal. Yeah, well, I mean, when when you come here and stuff, it's completely normal, isn't it? Because I think the good thing about our team, like I said this to Gibbo last time, but. Like, no one ever complains about someone being tired because we're all <laughs> actually wrecked by the time we get to training and then we have, like, a seven-kilometre session or a ten-kilometre session. It's just, like, it's a given. And then on your day off on the weekend, which some people in our team, it's not their day off, but you come in on a Saturday morning and have a match sim and you run about, like, 12Ks yeah. or whatever in the whole session and it's just, like, it's a commitment. But at the end of the day, we're all here because we love it. Like yeah. And, like, you're, I know how much you love footy, like... I um, really do, don't I? Yeah, you're obsessed with it. Like, And I mean, like, you love watching the North boys here, don't you? Yeah, I get r- quite emotional yeah. watching them. <laughs> so, which uh, is funny because... Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but for context, um, I don't know when this podcast is going to go out, but last night was um, North's win against West Coast Eagles um, over in um, west on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably, like, one of their best wins in a very long time. And I feel like we've – even all of us girls have watched their journey the whole year like they watch ours and we've just been hoping for that. Like, they've won twice now and they've drew once, but this win was, like, especially amazing. What did you think about it? Uh, well, I don't miss a game. Yeah. Uh, whether I'm at home or not, I either try to watch it on my phone yep. 
I don't know. I'm just invested in the club, and I just I just want to see them go well. Yep. Um, so yeah, I watch most games, and they always either fade out by one quarter or something like that. Yep. Um, you know, young young kids can do that. They yes. fade in and out of games. But last night's game, honestly, it's they just get they're building every week, and you yeah. can see how much better they're getting. Mm. And I think last night's win is just amazing. It's it's for the fans. Yeah. It's for them, their hopes. Yeah. Where they know, like they know where they're going now. Yeah. Um, but to go over there in front of their hostile crowd. Yeah. Honestly, was the best win I've. Yeah. It was I've amazing. Watched. Um, yeah, as you can probably yeah. like imagine, I was yeah. so emotional, yeah. <laughs> especially because they kicked first or West Coast hit the first couple of goals in the last quarter. Yeah. So I was like, oh god. It's so funny. Like I was talking to Jazz Garner before about the win last night. And she's like, oh, I had work. The next day, and I was like, I probably should go to bed. And she's like, I'm too excited to actually go to sleep right now. I couldn't sleep either. Yeah, it's amazing. And who would be your favorite player? Um, oh, that's so hard. I've got a few. Just give us I one. Think coming off the last few rounds, like I know Cam Zerha started quite slow. Yeah. But the last few games, um, incredible. And then Taryn Thomas. Like the size of him and he can go through the midfield yeah. and he's kicked however many goals. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned one. Ben Cunnington. I oh, know my God. Oh, my ben God. How did I not? Yeah, I know. He's I my favourite. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what a great number two. I know. They both share the number 10 and he'd be probably surely your favourite player. Yes. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm, I apologise. Let's restart <laughs> this. Um, ben Cunnington. Yeah. Uh, he's probably amongst my favourites. I just like – he just goes about his business. He doesn't yeah. care. Yeah, he's and he's pretty amazing. He is honestly. If I could get a number on my back, it would be number ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, everyone already knows number ten's <laughs> your number. Yeah, he's pretty. Amazing. I got it for Ben. Yeah, well, okay. We well, weren't you number ten in Brisbane. Yes. Yeah, so you got it for Ben in Brisbane as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's amazing. Um, honestly, he all Australian form. Yeah, let's hope so, right? I hope so. Who knows though these days? God. Yeah. But anyway, on to the next. Um, let's do some quick fire questions. Okay. So I didn't prepare Gibbo last time, so I didn't prepare you this time. She didn't love it because I didn't prepare her, but <laughs> you're going to love it. Um, I'd go, okay, first one, who's the funniest in our team? Oh, probably Daisy. <laughs> Come on. Would it actually be me? You'd be up there. Okay. Give us another one then. Who's someone you laugh at all the time? Um... Uh, Oh, God, this is hard. This is actually yeah. hard because I'm, like, fixated on... Exactly. Um, how long do I get? <laughs> <laughs> Literally five seconds. Like, you've got five seconds. <laughs> Probably Jenna. She says some, like, yeah. that's stupid things sometimes. That's a it's unique answer. Funny. I hope we get more of Jenna Britton. Not going to lie, Gibbo didn't answer me last time. And I, I didn't, didn't ask for it. She did. Oh, I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for it. Okay. All right, what's another question I got? All right, so who do you reckon will win the BNF next year? Um, quick fire, Caitlin. I know it's quick fire. First but like it comes to brain. You can't answer always, multiple. Well, I want to say – I'll probably say Jenna. Yeah? Okay, Jenna's got the first two answers, so clearly crowd favourite here. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> I said Emma Carney. I said I hope that she wins it. Yeah. Just because she's gotten – I was just looking at things today and she's gotten runners up like three years in a row. Like every year. I know runners what's coming. Up. Yeah, exactly. But like she just plays her role. She's just an amazing Yeah. Editor. Well Gibbo and I agreed on the fact that she was most valuable. Yeah. Because she does a lot of little things that a she lot of people just exactly. Like she's an incredible leader, but also an incredible person and a, an incredible player. I'm a big Carney fan. Um, okay, who do you reckon the smartest is in the team? Oh, well, this will obviously be you. You're the smartest. I, I didn't get the answer last time. Oh, who? I say? can't remember who she said, but she, it wasn't <gasps> me. Dare she? Yeah, I would. Uh, I'd say you. Do you reckon? Yeah, because me is book smart. Yeah, Not that's like still smart. I answered all round smart. Yeah, I actually said last time. A couple of blonde things. <laughs> Yeah, I s actually we were talking about this last time by coincidence is that Mia appears to be quite vague, but she's actually very intelligent. She's book smart. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Um, I appreciate You're that. Welcome. Okay, so young, there's a lot of young players coming through. Um, obviously, we have Alice and Bella from last year's draft. Um, I'm putting Alicia King in the category as well. I'm putting Mia King in there. Obviously, I'm quite young, but I'm taking myself out of the equation. Five years' time, who's going to win the BNF? 
probably Mia. Yep. I just feel like this year when she moved to Melbourne and was amongst us girls, yes, she just blossomed. She's, she's only going to yeah. get better. She's, she's also be, quite underrated. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think people um, realise that. They call the tractor for a reason. So. <laughs> the tractor or the bull. She gets a bit of all of that, yeah, doesn't she? she? Actually. Do you know what me and Gibbo talked about last time, which is quite interesting? Okay, we have this year on our list, right, four Tasmanians. I hope. Okay, Daria Bannister, Nicole Bresnahan, Brick Gibson and Mia King. Brooke Brown. And Brooke Brown, obviously. Five. That's I was about to say Brooke Brown. What have they all got in common? They are all like bulls. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like light skin or something. <laughs> <laughs> that as well. True. Need a tan. But they're all really hard at it, don't you reckon? They are really hard at like, it. Like they breed them quite tough down there. And I said that to Gibbo. I'm like, they breed you tough. Like I don't think you understand, Gibbo. You're all like the exact same in terms of like intent they at are the ball. Actually, yeah. Like even compared flash, like flash this year. Oh. Some of the tackles I was like, oh. Thank God yeah. I'm on your team. <laughs> Same as Gibbo whenever she tackles. Like, it's just like, thank God. Um, who is the player to watch next year? Mm, I'd love to wait till the draft to say that, but... Before the draft. Um, I just don't think we had enough of Brooke Brown last year. She played one game. Yep. Um, and she's a talent too. So She I has a lot to offer. If she can get a few games under her belt, a bit of confidence... Yep. She'll be one to watch. She played VFLW for us this year um, and she played down back. Yes. I hope I can say that. But she did play down back. Everyone would know anyway. And she killed it. Yeah, she she did. did play very, very well. Like I would say she had – out of like the six games she played, at least five of them she was bog. Big call, good call and a factual call because she was very good. And I would write up the VFLW match reports the uh, end of every week and Brooke Brown's name came up in every single one of them. Because she genuinely deserved it. So I do agree with you on that. Um, Gibbo and I decided on Daria Bannister. Okay. Because obviously every, agree. Every, every fan at home knows how good Daz is. Because we've seen like glimpses and she's incredible. And she's a great teammate down forward. But I know, a little birdie told me, maybe Daria herself, that she has been doing a lot of fitness work at the moment. Well, I have her on Strava. <laughs> and I know that she has been... Explain what Strava is, firstly. Strava is just an app where um, track we, we yeah track our running, but we keep each other accountable with it. Yep. Um, and yeah, she's been doing her sessions have been solid. Yeah, and also she's already been fit before, but if she's that step up, well, good luck. In case the fans don't know, she missed preseason last year yeah. because of her knee and had knee good surgery. Good point. Yeah, so and she, she wasn't fully fit, and she the already whole came back like that. Like I think back to Melbourne. Casey Fields, third quarter, kicked two goals in about a minute to get us within, like, 12 points. And, yes. yep, good luck to whoever plays on Daria Bannister next year, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, a little bit about your motivations behind football. Um, tell me why you play, Caitlin. Um, well, I just play for the little girls coming through. Yep. Obviously, I love the sport, but I just love where it's going. Yep. And what it can do for those girls coming through. Yeah, and how important do you think it is now that we engage with the younger generation? I just think it's it's so important, like it's vital, whether it's just a, a small communication after the game, that could be a massive yeah. thing for them. Yeah, Handing them something, like a little football or something after the game, that's massive. Yeah, it is um, a big deal, yeah. I think that's one thing that the girls are really good at, I think, um, mingling and chatting with the girls yep. and with the fans after, the, after games, I think – you know, we're really passionate about them and I think we put all our attention into them. Yep. Um, and, yeah, they they love it. Yeah. And, you know, you can tell they love their footy. Yeah. I think that's so true, though, as well, just um, how many little girls there are around the ground after a game, how important engagement is. It's massive. And go, even going to clinics or, mm. um, you know, days that we have here, open trainings, how many little girls come and are ready to – Get our signatures or... God, I just love it. They I don't even care who them. we are, though. Like, I think <laughs> at the end of the day, they see someone in our colours, they're like, oh, my God, it's a North Melbourne player. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's... Uh, yeah, it's very true. It is vital. You're completely correct by that. On that note, um, thank you so much for joining me, Hayden. It was a thank really great podcast. Me. And, um, yeah, really excited to see your where your game's going to take off to in 2021 slash 2022. So thanks for joining me. Thank you. Hopefully a few more goals, but we'll see. <laughs>